This is going to show you how to remove this uh, uh, filler, gas filler from your gas tank. Now, the first thing you want to do is stuff a real clean rag down inside your gas tank. And then when we remove this inside screw here, you have to open the lid. Uh, that way, if you drop that screw, it won't fall down in the tank. So go ahead and make sure you uh, do that, and then you can go ahead and pull that out. And then we'll go ahead and close the lid. Now you can go ahead and remove these. That way they can't fall in the tank. I remove these screws. Make sure you turn the key so this will open. And then you can go ahead and just take the uh, whole thing out. Take the rubber grommet out. And then your painter is ready to mask this off. Make sure you don't get any paint on this top surface. You can go ahead and remove these uh, rubber grommets and these uh, bushings from the tank here and then take the grommets out of here and make sure you put everything in a, in a bag and so you don't lose all this stuff. Man, how about that? I got this tank uh, back from the painter already. Wow, he's fast. Anyway, okay, I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, bushings back into the tank here, the rubber first and then the steel. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the gas cap in next. Okay, go ahead and put the rubber uh, donut in there first. Make sure you center it on the uh, openings here, on these openings. And then with the key in place, turn, you've got to turn the key to the side to, to uh, release that. Then you just set that in there. We'll go ahead and put these outside screws in first. Leave them a little bit loose and then we'll put the inside one in and then we'll tighten the outside up. I'll show you that. Okay, the outside screws are just tight, but not too tight. And then what we want to do is go ahead and put the small screw in back in here with the rag in the tank. And go ahead and snug that one up a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and take the rag out, close that back up, and then we can tighten these up. Then after you get finished, just check that again, snug that, and then that gas cap is ready to go. Next, we're going to put the fuel petcock back in the bike. Now, make sure that this is super clean and that these little screens, are, there's no even teeny tiny little holes in them because you don't want that. That has to be able to filter the fuel really well. Otherwise, you'll get crud in your carburetor and you'll have problems. So, make sure that's super clean and make sure the O-ring is in good shape. There's no cracks or anything in the O-ring. And then we're going to go ahead and insert it into the tank like this. Be kind of careful with the uh, valve to the outside and then what we're going to do, we're going to, on the uh, screws now these screws, for some reason these have a little rubber gasket around the bottom so make sure the rubber, rubber is down so go ahead and put the screws in and cinch that up and then we're ready to mount this tank okay before we mount our tank uh, go ahead and check all your hoses on your uh, carburetors here and make sure everything looks good. Uh, there's a hose that goes from this carb over to the top to that one. Make sure that's nice and flexible, not, not cracked. And then this is your main, uh, main vacuum line that comes out. This will be hooking to your fuel petcock. And then this is our fuel line here. It's the bigger diameter. Make sure those are in good shape before we put the tank back on because we do give you that fuel line. You can uh, replace that uh, if you want with the fuel line that we gave you, the black, thicker stuff. Okay, then one thing, uh, and I don't know if there's very many of these out there, but uh, the one bike we have had a, it had a extra, some extra emission stuff on it. And uh, the vacuum line on that one had an extra line coming off here. So if you do remove that emission stuff, make sure that you plug this fuel line here or you make it a solid line from one carburetor to the next because you don't want an open vacuum line or it will leak and it won't uh, your bike won't run good so anyway let's uh, go ahead and check this before we put the tank on okay before we put our tank on make sure that these rubber stoppers are on the uh, bike right here like this and uh, it looks like this uh, the uh, choke line goes right through that little opening right there and down it's above that rubber stopper uh, make sure your uh, hold down strap on your batteries on the uh, bike right here. Make sure that's on in place. And then I'll check the other side. Now on this side we have our rubber stopper. And then we have uh, our throttle lines, one on top, one on the below. And then we have the clutch cable running through here. So make sure all that's there and then we'll slide this gas tank on this bike. 
Oh, one quick note on this stuff too. Um, you can actually uh, look on a, a OEM site like Bike Bandit or one of those. Uh, you can they have schematics of all this stuff, and then if you say you did need a, a little part, you can go in there and buy them online. So, or like I say, check a dealer. But there's several of the OEM uh, parts distributors online. You can always look at the schematics and and find out if your bike's missing something. Let's go ahead and mount our tank now. Uh, make sure your handlebars are straight. It can't be twisted. And then I'm going to go ahead and install this tank for you. Okay, you'll notice that I was really careful to get the uh, bottom, the, the front of the tank, the hook in those little rubber stoppers just right. And then you can very gently turn your handlebars. Hand them, turn them both directions. Make sure they, they don't hit the tank there. Be really careful because you don't want to ding your new paint job. Looks good. With the fuel petcock in the off position, I've poured a little bit of gas in the uh, tank, maybe fill it up just a little bit. And then, uh, now what we want to do is we want to check, make sure that the gas comes out of this nice and clear. So, uh, now if you open your petcock to the uh, reserve position all the way over that way, gas should not come out yet because this has this, because of this vacuum valve. So remember this clear line that we gave you. Just uh, slide that over that smaller barb. And then what we're going to do, we're going to suck on this uh, vacuum line and gas should come out of the uh, opening there. Okay, the gas that came out is crystal clear and there's no debris in there at all. So I think we can go ahead and hook up our gas line next. Okay, now go ahead and hook your gas line up. And then don't forget your vacuum line also. Make sure that's uh, hooked up to your petcock there so you have the gas and the uh, vacuum. And then over here, we're going to go ahead and put our bolts in and just snug them up. And then make sure you run your vent line out here. So I run the vent line down, down past the battery there. And then I run it out the bottom of the bike down by the shock right next to the shock absorber. You don't want to rub it on, uh, run it next to the chain or the chain might dig a hole in it. So I kind of angled it right over and down through the, where the shock goes. Now if you have one of those models where you disconnected the uh, emission stuff and it has the extra vent lines here, just go ahead and plug those off with a uh, couple of hoses. Make sure they're plugged on the ends and then just run your vent line down just like the other bike. Okay, I think the, uh, the truth to be known now, let's try to fire this bad boy up. Dog goes crazy. Okay, now if your bike doesn't start and it's having a hard time, you can give it a couple of squirts of uh, starter fluid. Just give it a couple of squirts of starter fluid down through those holes. And that'll help it fire up, if it has, especially if it's been sitting for a while. So there you have it. Let's move on to the next step.